Okay, so let's take a look at 3.2, determining maximum and minimum values of a quadratic function. Again, we have our three forms of a quadratic function. We could have standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. We have factored form, in which case the factors let us know where our x-intercepts are, and vertex form. Now, a vertex form is obviously the easiest form in order to determine maximum and minimum. Why? Because the vertex is always the maximum or the minimum. So when it's asking us for maximum or minimum, we're always looking for the vertex. So if I take a look at example one, now you can read all this, uh, all this over, but obviously we're going to do all three versions of this. So it says first, determine the maximum or the minimum value of each function. So the first one's very easy because the first one is in vertex form. And these are the same three examples that we used yesterday but we're just going to reiterate what we did. The vertex of this thing, right away, we know is 4, 180. And we can come up with a quick picture of what this looks like, because if 4, 180 is where the vertex is, 4, 180, and it opens down, does this, and it opens down. Okay, so is there a maximum or a minimum here? There definitely is a maximum, no minimum because it goes forever downward, but there is a max of 180, and it happens at x equals four. That is the max. So this one is the easiest out of all three because it's already giving this in vertex form. Obviously, if it's in vertex form, that is the easiest because, again, max and min are your vertex. This one here, for example two, this one here doesn't tell us what the vertex is, but we can find it. Of course, this is just in y equals, and this is in x-intercept form, or factored form. And we can figure out the x-intercepts first. What makes that bracket equal to zero? Well, when x is equal to one, that makes that bracket equal to zero. So the first x-intercept is one. The second x-intercept, what makes this bracket equal to zero, what makes that bracket equal to zero is y equals negative five. So the second x-intercept is negative five. That doesn't tell us where our vertex is because remember, we're trying to figure out the max or the min here, but we can find the vertex using this because we know that the equation of the axis of symmetry is right in the middle between these two points. And again, when you go to graph that thing, and you know that one of your x-intercepts is at 1, and one of your x-intercepts is at negative 5, so negative 5, 1. If you know that here's my first and here's my second, you can count towards the middle to figure out where the equation of the axis of symmetry is, or you can mathematically find the middle between two numbers. How do you do it? You add the two numbers together, and you divide by 2. That's how you figure out the middle between two numbers. Add those two things together, negative 4 over 2, or x equals negative 2. That is the equation of the axis of symmetry. Okay, so that's the equation of the axis of symmetry, not the x-intercepts. Now that we know the equation of the axis of symmetry, which is x equals negative 2, we can figure out where the vertex of this thing is by plugging in x equals negative 2 into the original formula. So that's what I'm going to be doing right now. I'm going to plug in x equals negative 2, y equals negative 2, x is negative 2 minus 1, x is negative 2 plus 5. So I get y equals negative 2, this is going to be negative 3 times 3, and so y is equal to positive 18. So I know that my vertex is negative 2, positive 18. So vertex negative 2, positive 18. And I know this opens down because it has to pass through those two x-intercepts and because my a value is a negative. So then I can tell myself, is there a maximum or a minimum? Well, there is no minimum because it goes forever down, but the highest point it hits is 18. So there is a maximum of 18 and it happens when or it happens at x equals negative 2. So this one is pretty simple as well, pretty straightforward to come up with the uh, max. Again, the easiest way to come up with the max is by finding the vertex. If it's in vertex form already, great. If it's not, 
then we have to put it into vertex form or somehow figure out the vertex. So this one here, from yesterday, we figured out this vertex. It's asking us for what's the highest or lowest point. Well, again, we have to figure out where the vertex is of this thing. Now, the easiest way to come up with the vertex of this thing is by uh, figuring out um, the equation of the axis of symmetry and then plugging it in there and figuring out where the vertex is. So that's what I'm going to do. Remember, our little trick, the equation of the axis of symmetry, so to find the equation of the axis if it is in standard form is x equals negative b all over 2a. In this case, it's going to be x equals negative. My b is negative 24 all over 2 times a, which is 4. So this is going to be x equals positive 24 over 8. And so this is going to be x equals 3. So x equals 3 is my equation of the axis of symmetry. That means the vertex lies on here, so I can figure out the height of the vertex by plugging it into this formula. If I figure out the height when x is 3, I'm going to get 4 times 3 squared minus 24 times 3 plus 3. So f of 3 is going to be equal to 4 times 9, and this is going to be negative 24 times 3, which is negative 72 plus 3. So f of 3 is going to be equal to 36 minus 72 plus 3. So f of 3 is going to be equal to negative 36 plus 3 is negative 33. So the vertex of this thing, you know, is 3, negative 33. And if I come up with a quick picture to myself and say here's 3 and here's negative 33, just a quick little picture and this is where the vertex is. It opens up because my vertex is positive, so it definitely opens up. So it does something like that. So therefore, is there a maximum height? No, it goes forever up. But the lowest height is negative 33. So there is a minimum of negative 33, and it happens when or happens at x equals 3. And of course, there are other ways of figuring out uh, the maximum or midpoint or the vertex of this thing, but you would have to complete the square instead. So as just a heads up for completing the square, if I was to do this problem and put it into vertex form, I would take this and I would complete the square. So what, how do you complete the square again? Step number one, group the first two terms. Step number two, factor out just the number that's in front of the x squared. So this is going to stay the same. I'm going to factor out a 4. That divided by 4 is x squared. That divided by 4 is negative 6 x. Step three is complete the square of what's inside. So completing the square, this is going to be 4 times x squared minus 6x. Leave some space here. And how do you complete the square again? You add and subtract the same number. What's the number? Half of 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So you're going to add 9 and subtract 9, making the first three terms a perfect square trinomial. Step four is factor the perfect square trinomial. So this is all going to stay the exact same, but I'm going to factor this. This comes from a binomial squared. Square root of that is x, square root of that is 3 with the negative sign in the middle. Step number five is re-expand the 4 back in here. So this is f and x equals 4 times x minus 3 all squared. 4 times negative 9 is negative 36. And then you still have a plus 3 hanging out. And the last line is going to be adding those things at the end. f of x equals 4, x minus 3 all squared, minus 33. As you can see, this is in vertex form, and the vertex of this thing is 3, negative 33, which is exactly what we got. And if you come up with a quick drawing for yourself here, 3, negative 33, you'll have the vertex down here, and it opens up because the 4 is positive. So you're going to get the same answer. It goes forever up, but the minimum is negative, you have a minimum of negative 33, and it happens when or happens at x equals 3. It's a lot more work completing the square, but if on a test that asks you to complete the square, you will have no choice but to complete the square. Otherwise, I would suggest using uh, coming up with the equation of the axis.